Hi, Casey. Sam? Still the lading's all made up. 22 head. Hey, cutting it kind of close, huh? They call those things robes. Where's that fellow I hired to look after my stock? Whit. Said he could make twice as much working on the oil rig. How do you like that? He's right. Cows are old fashioned. This is an oil town now. Yeah. That's what I keep hearing. Make any deal on your spread yet? No, not yet. What's the matter? Don't you like money? I didn't. I wouldn't be out in a night like this. Oh, I don't mean beef money. I mean the jackpot. Oil. If it's down there, it'll keep. That ain't yours. That's the westbound. If I had 2,000 fat acres, Rigs sprouting up like mushrooms all around. I get kind of curious to find out what I was sitting on. So will I. Price is right. Meantime, I'll just set. Ben, don't you ever wash this coffee pot? Holy mackerel! Treasure's washed out. <laughs> Sure, give a sweet short notice. What's up? Trestle washed out ahead. Just got the news. Nice of them to let us know. How long do you think we'll be stuck? Can't tell you. Got a hot box back there. Next car, front truck. Better take a look. Hot box. Hold it, will you? on this car while I'm at it. I'll do it. Maybe I can help you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. I can manage. Sage Junction. The town's over that way about a mile or two. Do you really think we'll be held up for long? 24 hours, for sure. Is there a hotel in town? Sort of, but it's pretty crowded right now. You'd be better off right here in the train. Is there a way of getting over there? I'm going in, if you don't mind riding in a truck. The eyes of Texas are upon After this train, it would be a pleasure. Do you, do you suppose that someone could help me with the luggage? Sure thing. Oh, I wouldn't want to take you away from your job. I don't really have to check this fuse box, ma'am. I just wanted a chance to look at something pretty for a change. There's another one behind you.
Better let me go first. You stay here. I'll come back and pick you up. All right. I'll be all right, thank you. Throw some feed to those cars of mine, will you, Sam? Months ago, this was just a plain old cow town. All the wise money said it wasn't oil country. They even brought in a couple of shallow dusters to prove it. Then some crazy wildcatter went down deeper than anybody else. Whammo! I've heard about boom towns, but this is the first time I've ever seen one. It's really roaring. Even change the name. Call it New City now. I think it sounds more dignified. Hurry it up, boys. Lots of money waiting to settle down that safe. Thank you, I can get a bellboy now. That might not be so easy. You'd best stick with me. Pardon me, sir. I'll help you, ma'am. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the rest of the bags are in the truck. Yes, ma'am. And thank you for the lift. My pleasure, ma'am. You go ahead, ma'am. I'll catch you inside. recording office, would you? All depends on whether it comes in or not. It'll come in all right. Ain't hit a duster yet. Good luck. I'd like a room, please. No vacancy. Not even for one night? Not tonight, tomorrow night, or any other night. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We'll feel clear to the roof. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps someone is going to be out of town for two or three days, or maybe as well. Now, lady, we're sleeping day and night shifts. Two and three to a room. I'm sorry. No luck, ma'am? No. Oh, excuse me, but could I leave my luggage here for a little while? I'm rather tired. Sure. Make yourself at home. Thank you. The question is, where are you going to sit? Oh, there's one. Hurry, ma'am. Thank 
Thank you. <laughs> Maybe your luck's changing. Now, if you want your stuff moved, you just yell for summer. I'll be around. Summer? Summertime. That's my name. Well, thank you, Summertime. Here, I wish it could be more. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. We ain't no oil people. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Staked out, Casey. My friend Casey. Fine fellow. Fine fellow. Sure. He doesn't mean any harm. He's just celebrating. I know. A gusher. <laughs> you catch on quick. Is this the best you could do? Well, I got the last vacancy. Has four-way exposure. I guess you were right. I should have stayed on the train. Come to think of it, I know where there's a bed. Miss Bassett. Well, she's a fine woman, you'll like her. She runs a boarding house. How far is it? Not far. Of course, it's a little muddy, but I can fix it so you don't get your feet wet. So can I. <laughs> well, been traveling long, ma'am? Well, it seems like years. This is my fifth train since New York. I figured you were from the East. I guess they didn't tell you. We've got better trains than that down here. Better, but not cheaper. It's a long way to Mexico City, Mr. Uh, Cole. But your friend Harry Boy called you Casey. Well, that's my first name. Casey Cole. Oh, well, mine is Gallant, Lucy Gallant. It's a pretty name, it's, or is it Mrs.? It's quite definitely Miss. Look, how much farther is this place? About five feet. Are you sure it's all right? Sure. Maybe we'd better go back to the hotel. Don't you get yourself in a fret now. What's the matter with you, Casey? You going formal on me or something? You know that door's never locked. Oh, for goodness sake. Brought your new customer, Molly. This is Miss Lucy Gallant. Her train got caught in the washout. I knew you wouldn't want a pretty lady like this to sit up all night in a hotel lobby when you got that nice empty room upstairs. Empty room? What empty room? Oh, oh, the empty room. Oh, sure. Come on in. I'm sorry to get you up so late. Don't give it another thought. Looks like a real nice girl. Where did you find her? And it's about time, if I may say so. <laughs> Are 
I just made this bed up fresh this morning. But this is wonderful. I'll take it no matter how much it costs. Oh, don't you worry about that. Any friend of Casey. Oh, really, I know how scarce rooms are in this Not place. Nonsense. He can sleep fine on that couch downstairs. Well, this is your room. Oh, I just bunk here sometimes. It's got uh, kind of a sag in it, but it's a lot better than that chair you were in. Casey's like family. We don't rent this one out. Just keep a bed up here. It's nice when he wants to stay in town. It's awfully nice of you. Are you sure? Don't give it another thought. You'll fit fine on that couch downstairs. Be a little bit left over at both ends, but he'll make out. Well, I really shouldn't let you do it, but I will. Well, that's settled. I get your pillow. Casey, don't use them. I wish I could get Gus to sleep flat. Gus, my husband. Stop him from snoring. Now, Casey, you don't hear a sound out of him. I guess some men do and some men don't. Has something to do with the nasal passage, I think. Molly, how's the well coming? I haven't seen Gus for two minutes since they spud it in. He's down there now watching it like a set in hens. I think he's afraid to come home. And why shouldn't he be, if I may say so? With every last cent we had in the bank to pay for that lease. Everybody has the fever, haven't they? Catching like the measles. Everybody wants to get rich overnight. And what they're going to do with money in a town like this, I wouldn't know. You take Gus. Well, you know I uh, guess that about does it. What? Oh. Oh, uh, well, the bathroom's downstairs and breakfast any time you get up. Good night. Good night. Here, let me handle that for you. Oh, thank you. You were right about Mrs. Bassett, but she's nice. Better close this window. That noise goes on all night long. I don't think anything could keep me awake tonight. Well, I guess I'll say goodnight, too. Well, if I don't see you again... Oh, I'll be around. I gotta run some feed out to my cattle at the junction in the morning, but I expect I'll be back before you're up. I thought you worked for the railroad. No, ma'am. I got myself a little ranch about 10 miles outside town. Oh, my, I didn't know there was anything little in Texas. I guess we do talk sort of big. Mostly true, too. Good night. Oh, by the way, who is Lady Macbeth? Lady Macbeth? Yes. She runs the Red Derrick and you saw it coming in town. Oh, yes, I remember now. Good night, Miss Gallant. Good night. Wait till you see her. She was on that train that got stuck last night. She came to the house very late. I was so surprised. A real nice girl. Friend of Casey's, you know. Clothes like right out of a fashion magazine. And her luggage. It's white. All white. I don't see how she gets to clean it, let alone use it. Good morning, Papa. You feeling all right? Your father's nervous again, Laura. Just let him alone. Yeah, Gus was so nervous the other night, he fell all the way down the back steps. Here comes your new boarder. Good morning, Miss Gallon. Good morning. Have a good sleep? I certainly did. I was just telling the folks about you. This is Irma and this is Harry Wilson. And this here's their daughter, Laura. How do you do? And what do you know? They're well just come in. I heard about that. Congratulations. What a beautiful suit and, and that purse. Where'd you get them? Well, they're from New York. They're Paris originals. Paris France? Yes. You see, Irma, that's the kind of clothes you and Laura ought to be wearing. What's the good you're well coming in if you go right on looking like you always did? Which was never very good, if I may say so. Mama can't get used to the idea of being rich. I keep telling her we ought to go to New York to shop. Give me time to get my feet back on the ground. What's all happened so suddenly? And when we do shop, we'll shop right here in Texas, young lady. It's been very nice meeting all of you. I thought I'd take a little stroll. Oh, you watch out for them mud holes. <laughs> Thank you, I will. Just think, Mama. Paris.
breaks, just specimens come in. Let's go see Molly. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yes, indeed. Where'd she come from? Where'd those clothes come from? fancy luggage. Oh, that ain't Casey's. That's Miss Gallon. Who's she? And what's she doing in Casey's? I'll tell you all about it while we're eating. Molly, you should have been out there when we made the She's test. She's the prettiest girl. You could hear her 50 feet away. Real nice, too. She was she turning was out there like she was going to right? blow the lid off. And Casey brought her into town. I was watching them. Morning, ma'am. Good morning, summertime. You know anybody wants to open up a real estate office? You can get started cheap. You going out of business? Not me, ma'am. There's a man I was working for. Fell for one of them oil companies over last night. See him about a piece of no good land he got stuck with once. And this morning he told me to close up shop. They can't be bothered with the real estate business anymore. <laughs> I sure wish I could get in on some of that easy money. Well, wish for both of us while you're doing it. Sure will, ma'am. Goodbye. Bye now. Oh, I got all day. No reason to hurry. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes, indeed, there is. Come here a minute, will you? $95. There must be some mistake. Mama? Miss Gallup? Miss Gallup, $495. Ain't that kind of steep? I never paid any more than $22.50 for a dress. Well, it cost me $300. Let's see. Oh, it would look lovely on Laura. I'll take it. No, you won't, Hazel. I got it first. We'll take it. Oh, Mama. Why don't you look around? I'll go get something I think you'll like. I was looking at this. Who'd look better in it? Ruby. Oh, but Sal. 85 bucks. Why not? It's deductible. They don't fit too good, huh, ma'am? They fit like the skin on an apple. Just they ain't my style, that's all. You like it? Oh, it's just... Oh, I'm sorry. I like it. How much is this? <laughs> There you are, porter, assistant salesman, and a day's rent. Thank you, ma'am. And I thought oil was the only thing that beat off around here. Oh, women can't wear derricks. Hello. Hi. Thank you, summertime. I'll be seeing you. Yes, ma'am. Isn't it wonderful? They just loved it. They bought every stitch of clothes I own. $4,865. 
Gush your gallant. That's me. Polly told me what you were selling looked to her like a trousseau. Well, Molly has an eagle eye. That's exactly what it was. A brand new, never been used trousseau. But I bet it's the first time a girl ever made a profit on one. Got right up the corral and then barked. Well, that isn't exactly the way it happened. You going my way? Yeah, well, anyway, you won't have to worry about money for a while. That'll carry you a long way in Mexico. Mexico? Who's going to Mexico? I sold the luggage, too. I'm going to stay here. You sure make sudden decisions. Not that I'm against it, but I'll come. Well, I was thinking, right in the middle of the sale, the way it was going. <gasps> what? First thing you better do is get something a little more practical in those white water bottles. You mean something smart and well tailored, like those tractors that you're wearing? New city, not New York. Any reason why it couldn't be? Like New York, I mean? <laughs> well, I didn't mean all at once. Right, take it easy. By the way, what's the name of the bank president? Matt, you don't have to know Charlie to open an account. Well, I'm not depositing this. I'm going to borrow some more. What for? I'm going to open a store. Open it. We got a store, the, the Emporium, oh, right I across the I don't mean that kind of a store. I mean a real store. With Paris Originals, Hattie Carnegie, exclusive clothes in good taste. Hey, that's not a bad slogan. Have you gone plum local? What do you know about running a store? Like, well, I know $4,865 how to run a store. What is different? What's different about it? Is there any reason that the women can't get in on this boom town? All I've seen since I've been here are how the men celebrate. They weave in and out of the hotel or they whoop it up at the Red Derrick. Well, I'm going to give the women a place where they can celebrate the way they like it, buying clothes. Hey, wait a minute. Just calm down. I don't mean it that way. What do you mean? Did you ever do any work before? I mean, real work? No. You know anything about it? Buying and selling? Bookkeeping? It's nice of you to wish me luck. I just don't want to see you fall in your face, that's all. Well, this is going to work, Casey Cole. You just watch and see. All right. If you made your mind up, I'll introduce you to Charlie. Oh, thank you very much. I'd like to do this on my own. And by the way, if you must wear boots, wear black with dark gray. Not that color. Why not? It just isn't done. I tell you, miss, you talk sense and you're wide between the eyes, but we've already got a store here. I know the Emporium, but that didn't stop them from buying my clothes. How much do you think you'd need? Enough with what I've got here to rent a store in a good district and fix it up the way I want it and stock it with the finest merchandise. It's a pretty large order. Well, it's going to be a pretty large town, and very soon. You wouldn't be doing all of this if you didn't think so, too, would you? Hey, Charlie, what color you want to paint these walls? Oh, I don't know. Uh, like it was before, I guess. Look, Mr. Madden, I bet you've staked oil wells when you didn't know if there was any oil under the ground or not. Well, this is a proven thing. They bought every single thing I owned and clamored for more. You know, anybody who can sell $4,700 worth of duds out of a half a dozen suitcases, well, I got to stake them just once. Now, where are you aiming we should set up this store? Hey, is this it, Charlie? Yeah, fine. Go ahead. Oh, come, gentlemen. A bank doesn't have to be in half mourning just to look dependable. A bank should be a nice, cheery place to do business in, shouldn't it? Why, uh, yeah, I guess so. Make up your mind. I've got another job waiting. Well, I would like to suggest eggshell white for integrity with a nice, soft, green trim. Green? Yes, you know, like a dollar bill. Savings green, you could call it. Say, that's all right. Why don't you make up some samples for Mr. Madden to see? Samples? Yeah, samples. You do that pronto. Come on, do it right away. Now, we have to be on the main street. You know the building on the other corner, the uh, the Red Derrick, uh, the dance hall? Oh, yes, uh, dancing bar and such, yes. Well, it's almost the right size, and it's a perfect location. Mm -hmm. Well, what makes you think that Lady Mc... Uh, the owner would want to sell? 
Oh, I'm sure we could come to a fair agreement. And I am going to be fair, Mr. Madden. Just how do you aim to make this deal for the Red Derrick? Well, I was thinking, when a city starts to grow up, it usually has a board and a council and a citizens committee or some sort of thing to see that everything's in order, like zoning laws. What kind of a business can be in what district? And you're a very respectable citizen, aren't you? Uh, oh, yes, yes. And you're a banker. Yes. Well, obviously, you're going to be very influential on these committees. Well, probably so. Well, it would be better for her to make a deal with me now than to wait until something like this happens, wouldn't it? I hope you don't ever take it into your mind to run a bank. <laughs> Can we go over and see her? Well, now, wouldn't it be better if she was to come over here? Oh, come on, Mr. Madden. Well, um... All right, but let me do the talking. Hey, Charlie, you got a dollar? A dollar? Yeah, you know. Savings green. Well, there ought to be one around here someplace. Well, here, help yourself. You can credit it to my account. Hmm. Thanks. Here. Jake? Be sure and get that sample back. Uh, yes, Mr. Madden. I realize you don't know anything about me, and it might strike you that this is an abrupt way of doing business, but on the other hand, there's no reason to beat around the bush, is there? I don't know real estate values, but Mr. Madden says that's a fair price. What do you think? You hold a pretty good card. You're playing them face up so I'll do the same. Now, here's the way I see it. Sun hurts my eyes. Here's the way I see it. You can probably force me out of here, all right, but because I've got some connections in town, it might take you a while to do it. And you don't want to wait, right? Well, she ain't right. any bigger. That's my ace in the hole. You can buy it for 5% of your business. She'll have to think deal. that. Well, that was quick. I'll make out the agreements before you change your mind. Well, we won't, will we? He's used to doing business with men. <laughs> well, now that that's settled, tell me, where on earth did you get those shoes? Oh, do no. you like them? Well, Should I've you? had my eye on them ever since you came in the door. You know, I've had a hard oh, time getting them. Damn, Lord, I know just what you mean. I think we're about the same size. Yeah. Would you like to try that one? Not to exceed the total of... Five percent. Five percent. All the others just ruin my feet. I tell you, come closing time, I can hardly stand up. <laughs> Now, uh, if you will just sign this, please. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? In my business? <laughs> you know, every time I look through a window lately, there you are. I know it. But I have some exciting news. Mr. Madden loaned me the money, and Miss Macbeth... Oh, you two know each other. Sure. Hi, Mac. Hi, Case. Long time no see. Well, isn't it wonderful? I'm in business. I'm going to take over the Red Derrick. I thought you were going to open a store. Well, I am, of course. Gallants Incorporated. I've had my eye on this location since I got the idea, and Miss Macbeth... Mac, from now on to you, honey. Well, anyway, we've made the deal, and she's going to move out right away. Yep. Never been blackjacked so pleasantly before. I think the 5% of the business. Well, I like playing long shots. Mr. Cole doesn't seem to think I can do it. I never said that. You're thinking it. I just wonder how much experience you've had. Well, it seems as though I've sold you something already. Well, I figure a man can always use an extra pair of boots. Well, I got a bank to run. Let you know when the rest of the papers are ready. Hold on, Sally. I'll come with you. I guess you got to play them the way you see them. Good luck. See you, Mac. Is he always that stubborn? That's Casey. Steady as the Rock of Gibraltar and just about as easy to move. He certainly was the Rock of Gibraltar last night when I was stranded without a place to sleep. He gave up his own bed for me. Oh, could be he'd like to keep you heading in that direction. Oh, 
Mac, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Aren't they all? Let their pounding little hearts. <laughs> got some customers already, I see. They're lined up three deep out there. Oh, those aren't buyers. They're just lookers. <laughs> what do you think of it, Casey? Isn't it wonderful? Well, don't overdo it. I mean, don't get hysterical. Come along, fine. <laughs> Come here. My apartment is going to be upstairs in the back. Live over the cash register, that's me. And back here will be all the dressing rooms. Wait till you see it, Casey. You'll never recognize the old place. I mean, uh... <laughs> saved by the bell, huh? Lunch, everybody. How about splitting a sandwich with me, if you don't mind eating in the office? Well, I've got a better idea. Let's have lunch out at my ranch. Fanciest menu in town. We've got ham, corned beef, salami. Besides, you've never been out there. I'd like to have you see the place. Well, I'd love to, Casey, but somebody's got to be here to see that the work gets done. Uh, they've opened crates before. They know how. They don't know how to fit a dress on a model, though. She'll wait. Well, thank you, but I'm just afraid I can't. Okay, just a thought. See you around. Casey, wait! What kept you? Oh. <laughs> Casey's cozy corner. Certainly is restful. That's the general idea. And those oil wells over there, they're pretty too. You know, I could see one right about here, trimmed in chintz. That's what the oil companies keep telling me, without the trim. And you keep saying no. I don't say anything. I just listen. I figure the closer those rigs come to my land, the louder they'll talk. Mr. Madden says the way things look, you might be sitting right smack dab on top of one of the main pools, or whatever they call it. Yeah, could be. I'll know more when they prove up on the other side, over to the west. Did you build the house? That house was built before I was born. Certainly looks like you. It's solid, dependable, and, and kind of stubborn. That depends what you mean by stubborn. Could be just knowing what you want, not settling for anything less. Well, Casey, this has been wonderful, but I'm still a working girl. Yeah. I almost forgot. Suppose they don't. Don't what? I'll take that. Suppose they don't prove up on the West. Mr. Madden says there's a chance of that, too. Well, if those wells run dry, I can always go back to cows that don't. Oh, look. <laughs> That's old Daisy. Mm -hmm. That's her fifth calf. She's a real homebody, huh? I can see now why you're so unhurried and relaxed inside with a ranch full of happily married cows having babies left and right, and the oil companies fighting over who is going to make you the richest? Casey, you've got it made. Not quite, Lucy. Yeah. Casey, I really do have to go now.
hurry back. Yes, ma'am. in if you go right on looking like you always did. Which was never very good, if I may say. <laughs> Beautiful, Miss Gallant. And besides, Papa said I could have anything I wanted. Well, your father's a very generous man, Laura, but I don't think he's been to a girl's finishing school lately. It's cold in New England. It's so nice and warm. Oh, well, so is Beaver. Mama, what's the use of Papa being rich if I can't have what I want? Stop talking nonsense, Laura, and do as Lucy said. Party. What party? Well, the Bassamans. It's a very select group. Only the ones that struck oil or expect to. In other words, the whole town. You know, if you get around a little bit or put a phone out here, we wouldn't have to send the bloodhounds after you. Some bloodhounds? Yours? Oh, <laughs> Gus was sweet enough or high enough to let me use it. Come on, get your clothes changed. They want you in on the fun, too. You give them another hour, they won't know whether I'm there or not. Well, I will. And I have a little private celebration of my own going on. Remember when I told you I was going to open this door and you thought I'd fall flat on my face? Well, this afternoon I paid Charlie Vanden back every dime I owe him. What do you think of that? That depends on what comes next. But I'll tell you all about it on the way into town. I've got a million ideas. I've got a couple ideas of my own. I could have told you this ten seconds after I first saw you from the window of that train. You would have thought I was crazy. Then you got this store idea, and I had to let you play that out. But now I figure it's time for me to speak my piece. This afternoon, Standard doubled their offer. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell them I'll take it. Then it's you and me. Here, any place you want to go, just so it's me taking care of you, the way we both want. Casey, I... Hey, Lucy, I'm asking you to marry me. Casey, have you got a small drink inside? It'll help me explain something. Remember the truce who I sold to start the store? Yes. Well, I was to become Mrs. James Wentworth, Jr. I'd known Jimmy all my life. We'd planned a big, proud wedding with all the bridesmaids and all the trimmings. And then when the time came for that long walk down the aisle, there was only one thing missing. The groom. I found out why the next day when I read the papers. I suppose Jimmy read the story, too. Did you ever hear of John Gallant? No. But he was my father. And it was all over the papers and big headlines. John Gallant indicted for fraud. Well, I don't know which it was my father couldn't face. The scandal or me. Anyway, I didn't have a chance to find out. He killed himself. So, now you know. Have you got a light? You 
think with all the oil in Texas, we could keep those things going. You, um, uh, off men for life now? What is that? It's just that after what happened to my father... That then day Jimmy... you came out here for lunch, that's what made you shy off, isn't it, when I tried to tell you? Well, I wasn't shy. Yeah, I, I know. You just didn't want to get involved again. You got one good kick in the teeth, and you figured that was it for life. You can't do it, Lucy. You can't build a fence around yourself. But I'm not. What do you call it? Casey, I thought you'd understand. I guess I'd better go now. I'll tell Gus and Molly that you just couldn't make it. Wait a minute. What I asked you, that doesn't have anything to do with this Jimmy or your father or anybody else, but you and me, that's starting from scratch right now. I'm sorry, Casey. Okay. I don't mean to hurt you. Yeah, I know. You're out to prove something. You're going to be independent. Never need anybody. Never leave yourself open again. Just you and that store, Lucy Gallon Incorporated. You'll show them, won't you? All by yourself. That's right, and I will. Then you better get back into town and start doing it. Right now. Take this with you. I wish I'd never come out here. For my money, I wish you'd never come to Texas. Don't get away up there. Hey, let's go back. Just us two. Oh, no. Game's over now, Gus. Time to get some sleep. Might as well make a weekend of it. Molly's gonna kill me for walking out of my own party. Say, what happened at the ranch last night? Lucy's eyes was all red when she got back to the house. Driving in the night air, I guess. You can't fool me, Casey, you old pal. I got the convertible right here. She took the sedan. Oh, no, you don't. Here we go now. You better drive, Harry. Ah, uh, let's have another little drink. Oh, no. oh, come on, Gus. Irma's gonna be sore enough, that means it is. Well, so on, Case. Take it over. About coming in with Gus and me. No sense in letting the big companies grab all that gravy. We got plenty of money to swing it, and you'll be a lot better off when it hits. Okay, Harry, I'll take it over. Ah, boy, Casey, old pal. The CC Oil Company, we'll call it. Even sounds lucky. Hey, as you were saying before your friend showed up, Matter of fact, you weren't saying anything. You were just sitting there counting the flowers on the wallpaper. As soon as I get this wreckage cleared up, I'll make it some ham and eggs. That is, if you feel like staying. Casey? No, the only way to forget one is to find another one. Okay, bleed to death. Mac, have you been listening? Reports of the damage are fragmentary and subject to censorship. But there is apparently no doubt that the attack took Pearl Harbor completely by surprise. It has also been officially announced that casualties were heavy, although no actual figures have been given, nor have any of our ships been identified by name. Experts, however, agree that the first reports indicate that there must have been a considerable number of capital ships in the harbor 
to warrant such a risky gamble for a quick knockout. We will interrupt the program as we get further information. Can I help you, Mr. Cole? Show was closed on Sunday. Where's Miss Gallant? She's on her way to New York to do some buying. She took the early train. When will she be back? I don't know, sir. You want me to take a message in case she phones up? No. Yeah. Tell her I'm going away, too. I don't know when I'll be back. Yes, sir. I'll tell her. Anything else? Yeah. Tell her to mind the store for me. We didn't want this to go to waste. Say, as long as your babe owns a store, how about asking her to put in some nylons, huh? Yeah, I'll do that. Any size will do. Love, Lucy. Make it sound like the end of a telegram. the new gallant's trademark. Classy, what? I know all this must seem terribly unimportant. CC Oil Company. What's that? That's me. Hey, fellas. Get a load of this. We got a tycoon in the hospital. Gotta find the oil first. Fashion your seatbelt, please. Will you fashion your seatbelt, please? Fasten your seatbelt, please, Mr. Cole. We're coming in. Yes, sir. Come in. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Bassman. Don't worry about me. You take care of the rest. Come on, Harry. Always say, if you want a drink you can feel, you got to make it yourself. You know, I promised Herman. Hey, Gus. Look who I brought to your party. Gus. Casey! Casey Cole. How are you, Harry? Wondering when you'd get back. Found him prowling around the square like a lost pup. Case? Well, it's looking good. Down below 11,000 feet, running plenty high. I don't know any day. Come on, let's go out and see it now. Got here, man. Come on. Casey? Molly? It's not Molly Bassett. No, it's Sit and Bull. What's the idea of sneaking into town without telling anybody? Afraid we're going to give you a hero's welcome or something? Well, you're no hero to me, if I may say so. Oh, Casey, that is all so worried. And me even more worried. <laughs> Hello, Casey. Hello. Let him go, Molly. We've got business to talk about. He's got plenty of time for that later on. Right now, he's got to circulate and meet a lot of people. Come on. You don't have to meet anybody you don't want to meet. She's right over here someplace. Wait a minute, Mom. Welcome home, Mr. Cole. Thank you. Oh, don't you remember me? I'm Laura Wilson. Now I know I've been away a long time. I'd like you to meet my fiancé. He's an ensign in the Navy. Later, honey. A lot of new faces around here now. I still like the old ones the best. There she is now. Sure looks like a broken down old storekeeper, don't she? Hey, Lucy! Look what I got. And I won't be mad if you both feel like leaving the party. Simply say that she's the love. Casey! When did you get back? Just tonight. Almost five years. Didn't seem a day more than 20. Well, you look fine. Are you really well and fine again? I can't even claim disability. I suppose it's silly to say, but I'm proud to know you. Shall we sit down for a minute? How can I tell her of my love? Quite a place. Yes, I, I wrote you about it. Oh, yeah, I remember. Didn't think it'd be quite this big, though. We do things in a big way now. How's the store? The store is fine. But you haven't asked how I am. I don't have to ask. I can see. How am I? About the same as always, I guess. Only more so. From where I sit, anyway. That kind of takes care of that, doesn't it? You're fine, I'm fine, we're both fine. Would you like to have a drink to celebrate how fine we are? Molly's expecting a big reunion. We wouldn't want to disappoint her. Don't kid around with me, Lucy. I didn't come back here for that. Here he is. Tom Benning, Mr. Casey Cole. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I understand you just got back. That's right. I knew when I woke up this morning something good was going to happen. Molly works in the law of averages. Says that every morning, sooner or later. Oh, look, Kafka. You know these things wither if you touch them. Don't smell. Can't touch them. What good are they? Well, they're pretty, aren't they? What more do you want? Well, I'll say good night, Casey. It's wonderful having you home again. It's a lovely party, Molly, but I have a big day tomorrow. Why don't you give me a call sometime, if you feel like it? You know where the store is. Yeah, I know. Good night. Good night, Molly. 
Excuse us. Come here, you. What happened? Not sure I know. Well, aren't you going to follow her and find out? Look, don't get people mixed up with flowers. That only goes for the birds and the bees, or didn't anybody ever tell you? Well, what are you waiting for? There are five new cars in the garage. Thanks, Molly. And I just assume you burnt the rubber off Gus's. His is the red one. Don't close that door. All right, now you can close it. Why didn't you let me know sooner? Like when you wrote me, huh? I could have used it then. All those letters sound like a maiden aunt. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I'd given up about you long ago. That's why we're so cagey tonight, playing it safe. When I looked up and saw you standing there, I, I knew that no one could ever make me feel this way. Just so you keep that feeling. Darling, I'm trembling so I can hardly stand. I know it's because of you, but for now, let me blame it on a wet bathing suit. Don't go away again. is shock. What's your name? Lucky, what's yours? I'm going to be Mrs. Lucky. You're kind of taking things for granted, aren't you? Why do you think I lured you up here? Well, hurry on back. I'm getting lonesome. I have to hang up my suit. You want your wife to be neat, don't you? I just want her to be here. Molly was right when she said something wonderful was going to happen today. Molly's always right. We ought to call her and tell her. Later. Oh, she won't sleep a wink worrying about us. Molly loves to worry. No, I mean it. After all, Molly's my best friend, and you and Gus are partners. By the way, darling, how did they finally talk you into it? Oh, they've been after me for years. I just wanted to make sure I was going to get back in one piece before I told them to go ahead. Everything wonderful is happening at the same time, isn't it? That's right. Easy, darling. Come here a minute. Oh, you can't see it from here. <laughs> you know where First Street ends at the park? Well, I've been snooping, and I happen to know that property could be bought awfully cheap. What do we do with it? Build a house? No, Gallants Incorporated will buy it. I may have a little trouble with Charlie Madden, but I think I can handle him. I'm going to build the most modern, most beautiful store in Texas. Who's going to run it? Well, I am, of course. Who else? I kind of thought being married was a full-time job. Darling, I'll be right under your feet every minute. We'll have a lovely penthouse apartment. You mean one of those layouts on the roof with a gravel lawn? I saw a stunning one in New York last year. There's a picture of it in the magazine. What about a place like Gus and Molly's? If CC Oil hits, I mean. Or Harry and Irma's with a big patch of lawn all around. Real grass lawn. Well, that would be wonderful, darling, but the penthouse would be more convenient if I had to work late or... What about kids? Oh, lots of them. Are you going to manage that? Move the maternity ward into Gallants Incorporated, too? Casey, don't be nonsensical. Haven't I the right to do two jobs at once? Not these two. But Casey, you, you can't ask me to toss the store out the window. Well, you know what it's meant to... No, no, wait just a minute. Don't give me that crusade lingo. You got up at the nine count because you didn't like being knocked out, that's all. Oh, 
I see. In other words, this is sort of an ultimatum. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. It's up to you, Lucy. I told you once before, you gotta play him the way you see him. I did. And that time it turned out fine. Well, I've got Gus's car. Casey. Gus has got a lot of cars. I feel the same way in the morning. business. I call you on the telephone expecting to hear wedding bells and you burst into tears. Certainly it's my business. It's my oh, business. there's no good crying it up all by yourself. Tears are only good when the fella can see him. I can't go to him now. He'd never believe me. After the way I spouted off about my plans. Molly, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm so confused. Look, you love him, don't you? Only thing that stands between you and him are the four walls of this glorified dry goods store. The Great Gallants Incorporated. But it's my big dream. Well, wait up. Having your own man is better. Now, you take Gus. I, I know I can have him. But you know something? I want him. Oh, he'll... Settle down when the quick money gets monotonous, or, or he gets a look at himself someday in a full-length mirror. I've got what I want. Now, what do you want? You want to wind up a rich old maiden lady warming your feet at night on a monogrammed hot water bottle with a camellia on it? No, I... Of course you don't. You want to be Casey's wife, so you can be standing at the door when he comes home at night, you and the kids. And he'll tell you all about his day, and you'll tell him all about your day, how the kid ate his pablum all by himself, or he lost his rattle down the plumbing, or whatever it is kids do. I wouldn't know. And you better find out while there's still time. You know, Molly, I... I do love Casey. And that is what I want. Well, put on one of your fancy outfits and go track him down. Go on, take a shower. Molly, wait. Go on, do as I tell you. And the first thing you better do is put this prosperous clip joint up for sale. Stash the money in annuities. Suppose he doesn't strike oil. You can go live in a cave. Hey, that might not be a bad idea. Do you both good, if I may say so. Molly. Bye, Lucy. You got yourself an oil well, mister. We're in business, Casey. Tell the boys they'll break out another case as soon as they get it closed off. DC Oil Company number one and plenty of room for more!
line to the store. Well, Casey, it sure I... showed up fast. This gets around quick, doesn't it? Hi, Lucy. We just hit the biggest well in Texas. You came out to congratulate me, huh? Maybe you figured now I've hit, I'll see things your way. Maybe you think that and all the ones to come after it will build you a real big store. Well, I hope you're happy with your oil, Casey Cole. Sure hope you're happy. Casey, you sure know what you were doing. Have a drink, Charlie. No, thanks. Got to get back to town. Uh, but don't let me stop you from celebrating, though. Great life. Why, uh, sure. Why? Burned all the way down. Hmm? What? Oh, sure. Uh, nothing left but the shelf. Plenty of insurance, though. She'll want to rebuild. Rebuild? Maybe she won't want to rebuild? But how? Her place hadn't been left for 10 minutes when she was sitting at my desk with the doggone the sky high idea you ever heard. You know all that ballpark property? Well, she had some crazy scheme that she. I know. Big new store. I know all about it. Yeah, well, naturally, I had to turn her down. You know, it was too big for her. Too big even for the town. Anyway, you sure got to admire her nerve. Well, Congratulations, and uh, save some hair off the dog. I'll be seeing you. Charlie. Give her the money. What do you mean? Let her have her store, Charlie boy. Oh, I get it. Uh, you mean now uh, you might want to back the whole proposition yourself, eh? But uh, through the bank, of course, with us handing the... Uh, I wouldn't give her a dime for a dead horse auction, not if she had anything to do with running it. Well, then I don't see what you want to do. You just give her the loan, Charlie. An issue paper to cover what you can't handle inside the law. You'll find plenty of eager stockholders once you take that wet blanket off your face. Oh, now, look here. You can't tell me how to run my... Oh, now, be reasonable, Case. Now, you know you've had a few drinks in the... Charlie... There's going to be a lot of money coming to me up out of this little old cow pasture. Now, do you want to handle it through your bank, or do you want me to spread it around a little? Oh, well, now, Casey, you know... Well, then we... let her have her store, Charlie Moore. No rush decisions, of course. Say, sometime between now and when she goes to bed. If you ever tell her it was my idea, I'll nail your hide to the door of that brand new bank of yours, Charlie. Sure, Casey. Uh, 
I'll think it over. Charlie, it's wonderful. Well, I gave it some thought and changed my mind, that's all. The thing of all those dramatic tears I shed all over your desk this afternoon and the things I said to you. Well, you come down to the bank in the morning and we'll start planning, huh? Good night, Molly. Good night. I knew you'd see it my way. You've got more financial foresight than all of Wall Street. Well, <clears throat> you see, I'm, uh, I'm never pushed there. Hiya, Charlie. What's the matter? Molly's bank account overdrawn again? <laughs> oh, well, uh, I'll, come on, Charlie, I'll buy you a drink. Good night. Good night. Molly, I can't believe it's true. I'd like to get you and that lucky cowpuncher in a room together. Somehow this fight's not being refereed right. Well, I'm not fighting with Casey. I wish him all the luck in the world. In a pig's eye. Well, aren't I getting what I've always wanted? The finest store in the state of Texas? Congratulations. <laughs> Got a good look at you. New tailor. Same hat, same boots. Same Casey. You look great, Mac. Good to see you. I get it. Well, come on, Rogel boy. I'm in a no parking zone. I don't know the cops like I used to. How'd you know I was coming? Oh, I, I called up your office. So I told Gus and Molly I'd pick you up on the way out. Gus and Molly. Well, sure, Gus, Molly, Harry, Irma, strictly first name stuff. Yeah, the papers even refer to me as a prominent socialite. 
No more red Derek. No, sold that after my first well came in. Say, you don't keep up, boy. I'm a regular pillar of society. You know what? I like it. Well, it looks like it agrees with you. Among other things, I'm on the board of directors of Gallants Incorporated. How is she? Still single. It's not what I asked. Oh, isn't it? Look, Mac, don't start a hey, we big... We read about that cape of yours in Europe. What happened? Didn't she look enough like Lucy when you turn on the lights? Cut it out. Had a nerve, huh? I had it out. Oh. I hope you had a good dentist. Sometimes they leave the root. Just like last time, hmm? I wasn't on the list then, but Molly told me about it. What else do you talk about? Watch that nerve buster. Hello, Nettie. Here. Hey. Hiya, Mac. Hi! Where'd you find him, and what makes you think I want to see him? Because you're so sweet and forgiving. Hi, Molly. Look mighty elegant. Lucy whipped it up. You're supposed to wear it to picnics and barbecues. Aren't you ashamed of yourself gallivanting all over Europe? Tasty boy! I guess. How about gay parade? You think Harry and me ought to take a run over there and get caught up in some of that old world culture? There are lots of museums in Dallas. Welcome home, stranger. Hi, Lucy. Jim Wardman, this is Casey Cole. How are you? How do you do? Jim's from New York. He's been my general manager for over a year now. That's fine. I'll, uh, I'll get your coat, Lucy. Thank you. Jim's a dear. I don't know what I'd do without him. Well, how long are you going to be around this time? Oh, come and go. I hope you'll be around for the store's big anniversary celebration. It's day after tomorrow. That's why Jim and I have to go back to work now. Big deal. Even the governor's coming. Yeah, that is something. We're being recognized in a small way. You ought to drop in on the fashion show if you're still in town. Gallant exclusive. Oh, what do you know? Which reminds me, where's your wife? I'd be happy. Casey, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. It didn't come off, did it? What do you mean you forgot? That's all That's everybody's been talking does. about They're around playing here. Our song. Uh, mine too. I hope I didn't embarrass you. No, you didn't. Good. I know those Paris mannequins. They're rather flighty. But I have to admit, everyone I've seen has been a gorgeous creature. She was lovely, wasn't she? Well, like they say, she made a little music. Then you did stub your toe, didn't you? Depends on how you look at it. How long did the romance last? Oh, six months. Must have cost you a little money. Yeah, it did. Was it worth it? All things considered, every penny. Still wearing those marble flowers, I see. Lucy, here's your coat. Thank you, Jim, darling. If you care to come by the store, we'd be happy to take your money. Good night, Casey. Good night. Good night. I said she was still single, but I didn't say for how much longer. Come on, Buster. Take your paddle. Good morning, Miss Lucy. Good morning. I want you to go to the airport and wait for the governor's plane to come in, and the minute it arrives, let me know. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Miss 
Martin, be sure and check on that new hosiery shipment. I've already done it, Miss Callan. Good. How are we doing, Doris? Wonderful, Miss Lucy. Good as you look, and that's something. Oh. That looks lovely. Thank you. Just keep it simple. Miss Lucy, the most terrible thing has happened. Mr. Bassman bought a mink coat yesterday, a pastel at 6200. That's bad? It's terrible. He wanted to set special first thing this morning, and we did. To his house. Well, what's wrong with that? The card in it wasn't to his wife. I put the card in myself, and then delivery got his home address mixed up with his office. When did it leave delivery? I just called and missed it. Get me delivery, please, quick. Hello, Bill. You know the special from Furs that was sent out to Basserman's? Well, put Pete on a motorcycle and tell him to catch it before it gets there. I don't care how many tickets he gets. Yes, all right, have him bring it back. Wait a minute. Tell him to unwrap it and take the card. Where is the card? Right-hand pocket. Take the card out of the right-hand pocket, wrap it up again, and send it on. Right? Right. <laughs> Looking for you. Did you hear about the meeting? What meeting? Board of directors, two o'clock this afternoon. Well, that's impossible. The fashion shows at two thirty, and besides, the meeting was scheduled for tomorrow. Can't be helped. We're in trouble, Lucy. Charlie Madden called about the note. I had to tell him. We can't possibly meet it. Well, what do you mean? I've been warning you, Lucy. I don't understand, Jim. What do you mean when you Pardon say? Pardon me, Mr. Wardman, New York, on the phone. Thank you. See you upstairs. Too sharp. This isn't like the old days, Lucy. This is $250,000. I know it's $250,000, Charlie. You don't have to tell me that. Oh, now, Lucy, don't get excited. Why shouldn't I get excited? And why haven't I been told about the accounts outstanding until now, at this very minute? Lucy, if you'll recall, I've told you repeatedly that we should watch our collection. I don't recall $320,000 worth. I don't recall you mentioning an amount like that, Mr. Wardman. Your policy against mine, Lucy. Things had to come to a head sooner or later. So you won't extend the note, is that it, Charlie? It isn't that I won't extend the note. It's just that under the present circumstances, I can't see well, my way clear. what can you see? We were talking it over uh, before you came in. Yeah, informally, of course. The feeling seemed to be that if you stepped down... Oh, let's was... cut out the schmooze. Lucy, they've cold-decked you. Little boy Blue here wants to sit at the head of the table. It's as simple as that. Thanks, Mike. That was a nice end run, Jim. You came, you saw, and you conquered. Frankly, I did let the situation reveal itself. I have an investment here. What do you think I have? Who do you think made this store? No one denies that. You set the style, the type of merchandise. None of that will be changed. But the... Physical operation of the store has simply outgrown you, that's all. This is big business now. It needs a businessman to run it. It'll be better for all of us, including yourself. Lucy, I've known you ever since you first came to town. But, like he says, business is business. So I got deposit this to answer to. Now, uh, if it was my money... The plain I... facts are we're outvoted. You've still got your equity in the store. And uh, now you'll have time to relax and enjoy your money. Take trips and... Trips? To the dog races in Havana? No, now, Lucy. Oh, please, Charlie. I understand. Well, let's... Let's take a vote, huh? You know, it's funny. Years ago, somebody told me this would happen. Pardon, Miss Gallant, but you only have ten minutes to change and get downstairs. The governor's already left the airport. Thank you, Miss Mallory. Well? Shall we postpone the execution until after the festivities? I assure you that I won't try to escape. Why, well, uh, of course, Lucy.
we adjourn, gentlemen. The applause you hear is for Governor Shivers, who has just expressed his pleasure at being invited here by Miss Gallant for this occasion. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the fashions and the creations that you will see here this afternoon, as lovely and as beautiful as they are, cannot be half so lovely or half so charming as the delightful lady who is responsible for presenting them to you. She came to New City, as you and I know, and with her courage, her vision, her determination, and her personality, built this world-famous fashion center here in Texas. We wish her the great success that is to be hers. We know that she will continue at the helm of this great merchandising institution. And Texas is justifiably proud of her. My pleasure to present to you now, Miss Lucy Gallant. Congratulations and every good wish. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor Shivers. And thanks to all of you who, who made this possible. And now I'd like to introduce to you our guest commentator for today, the world-famous designer, Miss Edith Head. Thank you, Miss Gallant. As all of you know, there is no one permanent fashion center. It could be in Paris, could be in Rome, New York, or in London. However, after seeing this collection, I'm sure you will agree with me that today, the real fashion center of the world is right here in Texas. The fabrics used in this collection come from all over the world. For example, these oil skins were originally used by Gloucester fishermen and come from our New England coast. From another part of the world, from Chile, comes the fabric for this poncho and Serapi bathing costume. Tweed from England and tweed from Scotland are combined in a three-piece travel costume with its own reversible cape lap robe. from Canada and Frederica's Alaska seal skin. The coat is sleeveless and reversible. The wool for the slim hooded coat comes to us from France and the natural royal blue fox from Norway. An American sailor's pea jacket inspired this suit, even though the satin comes from Italy. Black wool jersey with a scarf bordered in black imperial broadtail, worn as a tunic or as a cape. Frederica's beautiful golden royal mink over gold pleated chiffon. Organy from Switzerland, and a reversible felt dinner coat. Hi. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, hello, Case. I thought this place was poison to you. I came to eat a little crow. 
the return of the hostess pajama. Black velveteen with twin overskirts of glazed chintz, embroidered in Spanish jet. Gotta hand it to her. She sure made it, top of the heap. You know, this is the first time I've ever been in here. And she deserves it. Everything she's got. Stop. Stop what? Tell him, Charlie. Tell me what? Yeah, go ahead, Charles. Explain your way out of this one. Out of what one? Come on, Dad. I need a drink. One of the most exciting costumes of the collection is this evening gown and wrap of scarlet and white Italian satin. And now, Miss Gallant dramatizes Texas. Here in this magnificent gown are all the iridescent colors of your own Texas oil. Congratulations. It's been so nice to have been with you, and this has been a great success. When you build the big store in the capital city, I want to be there for the dedication. Of course, I'm still in office. <laughs> well, it's an honor having you with us, Governor. Well, it's been my pleasure. Governor Shivers, would you mind stepping this way for some pictures, please? Will you excuse me? Of course, sir. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Lucy, marvelous. Lucy? Lucy? Look what this sentimental old fool of a husband gave me for my birthday. And six months too soon. Well, I thought it was about time she should have one of them things anyway. He never could keep track of dates or sizes. We'll help him remember after this. Molly, I want you to meet Edith Head. Huh? Well, so there you got it. Your story, huh? Some champagne, please. I feel like breaking glasses. Give her back your store, Johnny. What do you mean, give her back your store? How can I'm I? I'm picking up the note. Give her back your store. You mean you'll go for the whole thing? What's the matter, Charlie? Is my money any good? It's good, Case. Awful good. You know, Buster. You almost hesitated there for a second. I fly high, Mac. What's 250 big men? If you kept them in your pocket, you might have had her just where you always wanted her. On the ropes. You were the tallest Eagle Scout I ever saw. Charlie, I don't understand. Who picked up the note? Well, I was talking to a fella, uh, a depositor, and he liked the investment, and uh, he's perfectly willing, well, uh, to renew and let things go as they are. Charlie, is it Casey? Why, sure. You'd have had to know legally anyway. Very exciting. You could certainly afford it. Very far-sighted of him business-wise, too. I hope he doesn't enter into the policy and the operation of the store. You know, Casey doesn't... Oh, now, wait a minute, Lucy. How do you think you got this place anyway? Charlie, what are you talking about? I'm saying he blackmailed me into making you the big loan in the first place. Right after his first strike, the night your place burned down. I swore I wouldn't tell. But I'm tired of being pushed through a meat grinder by you two. In fact, I'm tired of this whole doggone... Give her the loan, don't give her the loan, give her the money, don't give her the money. Uh, Easy. Charlie told me everything. Charlie talks too much. Would you still back me? Whatever I want to do from now on, including being Mrs. Casey Cole. Who'll mind the store? What 
store. 